at recording this session learning so far about the aquaponic greenhouse so we got some watering system activity going on here we're uh, at this point we're still installing stuff um, oh yeah so yeah we can talk about it so inside the towers the first attempt was pump to week so we're expanding that uh, using a stronger pump let me make sure I'm recording yes recording um, Let's see here. Can you? Okay, I think mirror there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, unmuted, but no, I don't think anybody's listening right now. So build the side triangle walls. That's cool. That's how you would properly frame the. And if you're using the front and back walls as supports, you see that the outside wall doesn't have anything above it yet, because here we did everything is 16. All the sides are 16s meaning that the structure will not be 16 by 16 because of the thickness of the wall means that end walls need to be built up not like we did so then we put on the glazing uh, fitting that into place and I think we yeah this thing was uh, important the middle support bar was important to get that in Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this, this tank, I mean, it's a sizable tank, pretty simple design, 2x12s, works well, some reinforcing 2x reinforcing two by, two by lumber, uh, works pretty well. And uh, yeah, we moved on to some towers. Let's see, is that in this day? Yeah, so that's one angle. That's Brian putting these things up. Continuing onwards, yes. Yeah. So the first time we're using packs, packs with shark bite fittings, which are convenient to, to do quick release. You guys figured out how to disconnect them? Pull, pull back mm -hmm. the. Yeah, the ring. an adjustable wrench and basically just mm -hmm. pushing that against it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I just asked Leo to do it. Although I would, I would recommend if uh, anybody plans to do this that there's a specific tool for that and it'll make it much easier to, to do, mm -hmm. to take it out. Yeah, they do have a tool for that. You can 3D print that. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And then, at the end, we had a little surprise session sliding down panels. How many did we slide down? Like, 16. Yeah. I don't know how to use the first side, but it was the rest of them. The windows, that was kind of, um, they're heavy, but yeah, this thing works and just slide them down, but you gotta be careful that you don't poke the boards on, t like when you first load the, load the window on, that the two boards are separated far enough so they don't actually go into the window. That's the only thing you gotta watch out for. And keep the tire at the bottom. Yeah, the tire, the tire theory at the bottom works well. Sometimes you score a three-pointer, the tire bounces up and yeah. out of the way. Other times you kind of move it away. So yeah, uh, these joists went right down. Look at that, just right after one after another. For us to take down all the panels, dismount the, the carport there, that was one hour, 14 minutes. Most of it was actually taking down the panels from the roof. So as far as that, that carport, we just took it down uh, like mad dogs. Um, and there's a, a video or two from another angle that's peeking into the door. Um, yeah, similar stuff, just other angles. Was, to, was today's today's game and in, um, in the program so if you look at how would you design a, a simple system so if we go back to Apple on the greenhouse um, working dock let's go to the working dock let's put a couple of notes on that we're doing we're working on this right now so we've got a bunch of water solenoids now 
uh, here's the deal on solenoids. The cheapest route you can go is washer solenoids, which cost like five bucks each. They got two channels, so we get two channels for like five bucks or so. Um, now, let's see, let's, uh, let's get in. That's, uh, let's go to the Aquaponic Greenhouse page, which um, shows that system. So watering designs, water control system. So this is under water control system on Aquaponic Greenhouse page. So that's, this kind of washer solenoid is the most inexpensive thing. You can use AC relays, Arduino compatible controller, AC relays. This is 120 AC if you're talking about a washer solenoid. Uh, so you can get AC relays like that. Or you can use our universal controller. Uh, the universal controller, we use solid state relays, these black boxes that those uh, gray things which turn the bed on and off, and the bed could be like two kilowatts, like for the big printer. It's only like 300 watts or so. It's a MOSFET, right? It's a transistor inside, uh, probably a MOSFET inside this, plus some circuitry that allows that to work. So solid state means that you're using transistors like MOSFETs or IGBTs. Um, so universal controller, how do you, how do you do it with a universal controller, though? Because that's what we're gonna we're gonna break out. I mean, let's bring one out right here. And for the for the Arduino stuff, um, is I'm assuming your sample code that you guys have developed is it all in Python or is it other languages? It's just Arduino programming environment. So you download Arduino IDE, and but we can use the code that's Marlin for this purpose. Okay. Uh, if you understand a little bit about how Marlin works. The idea is, in the 3D printer, you've got all kinds of controls, temperature sensors, motors, um, heaters, fans. That's all in a 3D printer, and this controls it. Like, for example, out of all these blue ones, we, uh, we tap this one for the extruder heater. The next, one, next two over are the blower, which comes on at particular times. And these other ones are for... Uh, bed heat what, what voltage is this? we operate this is a combination of 24 right here Let's see if that's I'm sharing that um, so we've got a combination of, we're actually running 24 volts this board here is designed for 12 volts so we snip off a little diode in there and turn it to 24 volts. <laughs> no. uh, but the solid state relay, which is missing off this one, let's grab a solid state relay. Uh, do you have any here? So, solid state relays are these, uh, yeah, like if you look at it's this box. This, SSR, this is a standard part you get off the shelf anywhere, so SSR. If you Google SSR, 40 amp, that's what that is. It's one of these uh, solid state relays that goes in here. So the Arduino sends out a signal from actually from one of the, from the bed. This takes an input of like 3 to 32 DC, and on the other side you can control AC. You can actually control DC as well. The way these work, if you switch DC, you can only get like five times or 10 times less power through it because it heats up with DC. These are designed for AC. Uh, but we can run, we've got, uh, so the washer solenoids, 120 AC, you just can't find them. Like we had a whole box of them. I just can't locate it. But Paul had some 12 volt relays. This thing will work with a 12 volt relay. This handles 40 amps at 120 volts. In fact, down to like, uh, like 240. It's actually 380. So this says on it 25 amps at like 380 volts. That's like uh, what is that like? Like almost 10 kilowatts. This switches yeah. quite a bit of power if you do high That's voltage on it. Yeah. Um, so you can do a small load. Like how much does a relay take? It's only like five or 10 amps. Oops, sorry, not not five. Watts. Uh, so like one amp at 12 volts or less. 
something like that, one amp for the washer. So this can definitely handle it. I mean, it's though it's designed for AC, that can no problem handle it. So all we'll do is uh, at this stage, since we have three ready exits here, we can connect. So we'll put like this one, we'll put another and another and just run a wire into that and turn on our valves. That's all. We can do that. We can go through the the Marlin and click print. But if the G code we upload is turn on the blower, turn on the heater, it's like you just fake it and you just turn on the solenoids instead. Now you also have a lot of free pins. There's a whole load of free pins everywhere. Uh, because the Arduino Mega that's underneath it has about 50 outputs you can control. So this thing can control like 50 solenoids, at just one after another. So we will t we could tap into these all these other ones and control as many solenoids as we like for watering whatever we got. And in our case, we'll start we'll do the test. We were talking about it. Let's just do the test with three solenoids. See if we can switch them properly. And if you want to use the other pins, you look into Marlin documentation. So in G code, like you have to find out. So Marlin, turn on heat bed. There's a code that you'll just write that. Uh, it's M140. M140 turns on the heat bed. So how does your G code look? You can click print and the first line of the G code, like the file that you're actually going to run, you're going to take out the SD card, you're going to put it in your computer and upload a code. It's a text file that would say M140 and that yeah. will turn on, this that's it. This is a bit temperature. Uh, yeah. To enable it. Yeah, so you can do... But, uh, yeah, whatever that code is. Yeah, and, and there's a, yeah, and that's, let's see if, uh, that goes to the sensor too, right? Yeah, that's the thing that you have to have a sensor there. So that's actually not a good, it waits for, if you, if you don't reach that temperature, it'll just trigger out and it'll mm -hmm. quit. So it's binary somehow. Yeah, but I think you can hack this to, you can say, turn it on, um, while ignoring what the actual temperature is, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think there's another. One. But there's another code for how do you turn on all these? So okay, so we got only like three channels there out of the ready ready-made connections, which are convenient because you got got screw down terminals. You can put wires in there and you can connect readily. And all uh, those terminals send out 24 volt volts. No, they're they're different ones. This one actually sends out the way we wire it this all together. The first one's actually five. Uh, typically, it would be like 12. Typically all this would be 12, but we hacked it, so we're doing five out of this one, because we're actually powering, using this for our power. This is a five volt wall yeah. work. So we're powering the system, the Arduino with five. So we actually get five out of that one, but this one triggers at three volts, so we're good. Um, so we can use that. Out of these other ones, because we hacked it for 24, these are both 24, so that's once again fine. This is up to 32 volts input. And uh, <laughs> we're just saying, we got this already, let's just use it as is, because otherwise you have to wire up a power supply, five volts or whatever. Uh, we've got everything here, including safety, actually. This is a ground fault connection interrupt uh, outlet. So if you get water on this, it'll turn off. <laughs> you get some kind of short, typically. So that's cool. So we've got this whole system built up, including that you can hit play, uh, as in print, and it executes the code that you like that you put on your card. So we do say the M140, but, but let's say turn on <coughs> turn on fan, turn on blower. So what is that code? Um, uh, fan, fan off, fan on, um, M10, set fan speed, yeah. So you'd go like, you'd do M106 to trigger Oh, the, this this one, the, the two middle pins there, those are the, the fan thing. So you'd go M106, full speed, whatever is, uh, let's see, like S255, that means it's on fully. So your code, your text file, so you'll, you'll upload uh, towerwatering.g code and into that text file, that g code is a text file. Into that file, you just simply say, okay, M106 to uh, S255, and I'll turn it on, and that's it. And then turn off was, I think, like M107. Mm -hmm. So you got to turn on, turn off, very simple binary logic. 
Uh, and you've got that. Now, what, what if you want to use one of the very multiple pins? So how to convert like all these pins to for G code? Like G code like, actually can control all of that. So uh, that is, let's, let's look at my log. I, I logged this some other time. Um, pins in Marlin. Set pin state? Yeah, set pins. Uh, it might be under just Marlin. Um, Let's just look at Marlin. Rolls <clears throat> about source, universal controller. Uh, how to set or Google this, how to how to activate I forgot how you do this. Yeah, the pins activate have numbers pins. like yeah. P thirty three, P forty four. Yeah, set pin state, Marlin firmware. So do you do M forty two? And then, uh, whichever pin that is, and there's like one through six, how much? How much is there? What's it all got there? Just read that. Um, but there's a whole bunch, like pin 50, 44, 33. That corresponds to, you gotta find out, okay, what's the map of these pins? So you look at a diagram. This is a, called the ramps board. So you look up diagram. So, so you, you go ramps board diagram, and you'll basically look at. So this this is the you know the standard you typically look at this this complicated thing. But that's that's a layout of all the pins that are on it. So you can take a look at, for example, like whatever, like say D three, D two, D fourteen. Like those are all open right now. We can just say do those um, and they have a correspondence to the M42 I think it's like uh, you gotta look at pin mapping what's the map of like for example when it says D D37 you know D31 etc what's that number like like we have D eight, D nine, D ten. What does that number correspond to? It seems to be called S nine or S fifteen or fifteen or whatever in the Marlin example. Show me. So uh, back to the Marlin set pin states sec section. Yep. And if you scroll down, it says that the samples here would turn the lead on, which is the code referred to it. S one. It's a pin thirty three. It's the same as P thirty three. That's a state pin thirty three. And then pin forty four. So P yeah, 44. pin forty four. And there's there's one step there. Like, is that just for? It might be just as simple as one through like fifty or whatever. So you have to look at this map and see like D25 is like in that long row, but that's actually taken up by our LCD screen. So you want to take like these auxiliary ones, for example, like D, say D42, 40, oh yeah, like 44 we just saw. But um, is it, it RAM board Arduino Uno we need to check out or? It's Arduino Mega uh -huh. is underneath. So you have to uh, figure out like all those numbers here, what they correspond to in terms of the Arduino Mega, which are um, but for now we can do like definitely like D9, D10. D10 is the extruder, so like for easy easy right now we can control D9, D10. Um, so for example, extruder heater. Um, turn on heater, turn on extruder, even searching heater doesn't do anything. Chamber temperature. Uh, how do you turn so heat? M one four one. 
the setting for set chamber temperature. And that's the only thing I'm finding on the chamber. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and we can we can look, bring the computers down there and look at the numbers we've got. So turn on extruder, like, okay, I would just Google it, maybe not in the Marlin, but G code for, for extruder, typically the, I guess they got a great search there. Like, fundamentals, like, uh, yeah, you can read up on fundamentals of G-code, but it's basically commands that, that correspond to turning things on and off or or doing more advanced things like running a stepper motor, which has a bunch of on-off signals timed in particular ways. Um, G-code, maybe G-code cheat sheet. Oh, okay, there we go. So probably like... So the thing that would be important for timing, delay. Okay, so, okay, turn fan off. Okay, there's M107, extruder. Yeah, so M104 would be basically the extruder. That, that would be D10. Um, we do this. That means basically you go M104 and then, yeah, that's, that's problematic there though because uh, this one, is it the, isn't it the chamber that heats it up and then you have a sensor on the extruder to make sure it matches? Yeah, there's... 141? The easiest one that's that's activated, actually like D9, the, the fan. Uh -huh. The other ones will require you to have the thermistors plugged into the board, which is somewhat of a complication here, but... Turn on fan. No, um, uh, M106, M107, we'll just test it with the middle one. But basically the first step is you take your 12 volt power supply, you trigger your, you basically take wires, connect them to the solenoid to see if that triggers. Okay, step number one. Step two, can I get in my code, I can type M107, turn turn it on. A delay, like, so the thing is we, we gotta find what pauses. Control F, pause. Here, M226. Um, but M226, you'd want to say, okay, so, le so let's delay in G code. Maybe wait for sleep. Sleep, I think, is what it is. Yeah, for, for a given time. What's a G code for waiting? You want to set the number of seconds or whatever where you're delaying. So, yeah, so for example, G4. So 60,000, it counts it in milliseconds, so you wait for one minute. So we can go M106, next line, G4, P6000 for, uh, for six seconds, and then M105, turn it off. So that would be your, your simple G code, manual, you type it in manually, and there, you're turning the, the fan which is connected to our solid state relay, to our, to our solenoid. So how do you connect these things? For this, it's you got screw terminals, very easy. You just unscrew it, put your wires in. From here you can do, I mean, we've got a bunch of these wires like this here, these, these small wires with ferrules, these little connectors on the end. Uh, we can do that, or you can just put the wire in there directly. If you have stranded wire, it's, it's gonna get all frayed up, so that's why you put these end terminals on it. If you got a solid core wire, you can just stick it in there. But those terminals are pretty small, so you can only fit like gauge 14 or something, small wires in there. Mm -hmm. um, so then, so one side, and it's clear, it clearly says it like DC uh, input, like it says input on one side. So these two are plus minus for the input and the other is the high power side, like your 120 AC. So we're gonna connect, we can connect a plug. So how do you do the, where do you plug in? Can we plug in our uh, solenoids into this? Well, if we have a divider here, so that's our power for the whole system here, but you know, we can plug that out and put a, like a triple triple plug in here, plug in um, power to the Arduino here, and then plug another one for our solenoids. That's one way to power it, or just use another power outlet. But this this is convenient because you got you know two outlets already, or you can break into these wires and you know power your solenoids that way. You only need like a very small small amount of power. It's going to be a fraction of an amp. It's, if it's 10 watts. How many amps is that at 120? It's like a tenth, one tenth of an amp. So, so very tiny wires will do. They will trigger your, 
if it's 120, that'll trigger trigger your solenoids. So things like that. Um, so yeah, simple simple code would be working with uh, M1. Was it G? Was it M104 or G104? What was that before? No, M pause seven. M was it turn? Is the fan? Yeah, fan M106. M107, I think you said the turn fan off. I think, yeah, so, yeah. so M106, then G4, and then M107. And that's your three line code that will turn your solenoid on and off. And then you can do whatever else you got. That'll be the first test. And then we have to figure out what are all the other pins. Like if we connect, how do you connect the wires to those headers? There's, uh, we've got jumper wires. Uh, we'll be working on with little jumper wires that you connect them to, and then you can control as many of those solenoids as you like. Now the trick to this, all this stuff is, it's not like these things, it's all the interconnections. Like, like for example, on the solenoids that we had, we were set up for the washer solenoids which have hose fittings. Like, so I got a bunch of those fittings. Now we got these other solenoids and we don't have fittings. We're struggling to uh, get these NPT fittings and we actually did find a bunch because um, we got all kinds of fittings here. But that's the pain, it's like, leak type connections making connections because there's so many that's that's where like all the matter is running wire running tubes yeah, yeah running plumbing and wiring is all this is about and the problem is that the the stand like for example on these solenoids that we just used they're fake npt thread they're straight and there's all kinds of threads there's british pipe thread there's national pipe thread there's O-ring type of thread, hose thread, all of that kind of stuff. So the fittings we needed, they were actually national pipe, which is a standard pipe like they have in this country, you'll, you'll find pipes. But this one was straight, it wasn't tapered. So we had a tr trouble getting some of those other fittings on, we had to use like adapters. Um, but yeah, that's that's like one of those things that are kind of painful. Cause uh, you know, you think you got all the parts, but no, like unless you are very explicit, okay, here's the part, here's the fitting, Here's the tube, here's the whatever, maybe the hose clamp or some other connection, sharp bite. You gotta be very explicit about it, otherwise uh, it's like we're kind of struggling right now. Yeah. Instead of having that already done, we're uh, still trying to connect it up. But that, that's where all the, the trouble is, it's interconnecting things, plumbing and, plum, plumbing and wiring. And doing that effectively, like with quick connects, is a, that's where you get all the power. You can connect up so many different things, you can water your, your uh, whatever we've got there, the, the growing bed, you can do your shelves, you can do whatever auxiliary watering you gotta do to any, even like uh, we've got these worm, worm bin things that have mesh on it, we stack them all together, so they need water, like we could water the worms too, because they need, need a nice warm environment. If you wanna mist in the summer, you know, misting, that's another channel. Blowers, maybe, turn the blowers on and off to, for cooling. Things like that. Yeah, ventilation so, uh, windows. Yeah, so this becomes does become convenient. Like right now, if we had like a hundred towers, we can use that one pump to do it because we can turn on different channels, like eight, and then we'd need 12, 12 outlets per each of the eight channels, and there you go. It would be impossible with just one pump unless we have this, which which gives us logic, and then we can expand the capacity of the greenhouse by doing that. Um, we talked about two days, three days ago, we went through the, one of the Google Docs. Uh, we talked about automation. We also spoke about a dashboard. But that would be uh, like a standalone system with just the sensoring part or...? or oh, a dashboard? Um, not sure what you're referring to, but yeah. as far as sensors, yeah. Temperature and humidity would be very important ones. pH. pH for the water. And uh, something I recommend doing. if uh, you ever try uh, Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. with a program called Nikoto, which is also open source. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the guy who built it made it for like uh, mycology actually, but it works for plants too. Oh, cool! And so you can do all, use all the sensors, but also control like motors, control. Uh, oh, nice! Stuff like that. that. Oh, look at that! And so do they have? You, you do have a dashboard like that with all the information. I've seen stuff. those before. Yeah. And you can you can see graphs and uh, history and. So I actually have built, oh, nice. I've, I've installed it on, uh, uh, on one at home and for my uh, hydroponic setup that I'm planning to do. And uh, I was able to hook it up to the sensors, get proper readings, oh, nice. and then I've got like four, four different um, oh, motors, cool. pumps. What is EC? Wow. So uh, well, electrical contest that's them to measure how many minerals are in the water, which for hydroponics, you know, you use like the chemicals to, to add it. So for water temperature, 
pH, EC, water flow, water level. I know the water temp, that's a cheap dollar sensor. Mm -hmm. What about pH sensor? How much is that the cost? pH sensor and the EC sensors are like uh, 30 bucks each. I got them from a place called uh, AnyLab, I think is what they're called. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's just a guy that like makes them at home. Mm -hmm. um, but they're fairly affordable and pretty good. I don't have a water flow or water level sensor. I do plan on adding a water level sensor. I actually need to, to add a tank and all that. How do you do the water level sensor? Is it like a long tube? Yeah, or? like a long like sensor mm -hmm. um, that goes in there. And then you know, What is it based on, like light based or is it? Uh, you know, I don't really know. It might be conductivity. Um, something like capacitive or something. Yeah, the, the, I think it just depends on which sensor you use because I think mm -hmm. they have them both ways. Yeah, I mean this is beautiful. So imagine we got this dashboard. We see okay, the health, like pH, temperature. Yeah, temperature, pH. And here you can also set like, um, equations to where you set the minimum and maximum pH that you want in the water. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes out of them, if the sensor reads it outside of it, you can actually make it pump pH up or down to regulate it for you. So you don't even need to do that. How does it do that? By in injecting what? Like uh, citric acid? or? Yeah, uh, pH up and down, I think it's just acid and base. It comes mm -hmm. like in bottles. Mm -hmm. And then you can use like, um, what I have is like four pairs solid pump pumps. And they're going to go into like four bottles. Uh, two of them are the minerals, that like the nutrients, but then two of them will be pH up and down. Yeah. And then the um, the algorithm that they use when when it detects like if it's too high pH, then it'll turn on the pump that's connected to the pH down. And it'll do a little bit at a time because you don't need to you know fast changes. It could go over time. Mm -hmm. And once it goes back to normal levels, then it'll it won't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really cool system that you know it's going to be pretty useful even in this case. Is it self-adapting? Like understand the volume of the water it's working with and, and the distribution of it? Does it learn in that sense? <sighs> not really. It's not like a. There's no machine learning it here. Doesn't need to be that smart, probably. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you might be able to do it if you check the water flow and water level. You could probably do a lot of calculations with it. How much does it cost for that whole setup that you got? Uh, the Raspberry Pi is like what, thirty-five bucks. Mm -hmm. um, the pumps each for like a five dollar thing for the uh, temperature and then 30 each for the um, ph and ec mm -hmm. and then the pumps i got like uh, i want to say i got uh, 60 bucks for four of them something like that um, mm -hmm. and that's really the major one i got some stuff like uh, stuff to man it on uh, hdp panels and that was like uh, 20 bucks or something like that um, and i think so far those are really the major expenses because obviously my code itself is open source so mm -hmm. it's free um, and so yeah, I still need cool. to actually get a tank and all that going, um, like a big tank. But I tested it on a small one, it works very well. And what's there the compatibility with the Arduino? <coughs> um, it, it's, it's like a, I think it's like a Python and Linux based, so it can't, you can't install it on a Arduino. It have to be on a Raspberry Pi at this mm -hmm. point. But there may be an equivalent for the Arduino. As far as, I mean, the Raspberry Pi is actually running this display panel, or, or no? Or that's like browser? Uh, that's a browser you connect to it uh, over the network. Right, mm -hmm. and it also has um, a Grafana uh, endpoint if you want to enable it, which means that we can put all the data there. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. so um, you can connect a display, like a LCD display to it mm -hmm. um, to show some stuff. Um, yeah. But most of the stuff you're going to see through your browser. Yeah. Do you have any sort of time limitation aspect? I'm, like, I'm assuming you're using the Raspberry Pi GPI opens as opposed to the Arduinos. Do you have any like, time based aspect? Because I've heard that. The Raspberry Pi GPI opens to be a little slower than the Arduino. Um, the processor? Like, don't, yeah, the processor. I haven't really run into that, but honestly, I mean, the kind of stuff that you need here, you don't need like, you know, split second decisions here. Right. Most of the stuff happens over a while, so I don't think I've run into any of that issue. Gotcha. Because I'm thinking like the Arduino would run, but yeah, it'd be slower and slower clock cycle versus a you know, full processor, right? So you don't run too fast. There, there's a Docker container. Oh, for, for my photo. Gotcha. Yeah, so we can run it here too. Yeah, it's not a problem. You don't need the Raspberry Pi. You still need to get the signals over to the. Uh, yep. That so. Might be easier. So how how do you connect the Arduino to the Raspberry? There is no Arduino. You're just going directly. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. The yeah, you control, control the PWM is dir like connected directly from the Raspberry uh, Pi to, <laughs> and you can uh, connect it to. Uh, okay. Okay. I see. Okay, you can connect it to a relay though. For aquaponics, is there a way to automate uh, measuring ammonia and uh, uh, dissolve oxygen? 
Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if uh, we they, 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 sensors like that exist. I'm sure they do. The question is whether or not they're affordable. They uh, are. Maybe, they maybe are Martian can, can say. Yeah, it gets tricky as far as the open source sensors for everything else. Uh, I'm glad to see that the pH is like 30 bucks. Once again, it's stuff that would be open sourceable, like if you understand the electronics behind it. It's all low cost. I mean, transistors and all kinds of microelectronic devices are like a dollar a pop, you know, so it, open source it would be inexpensive. Uh, there might be some hard things like how do you measure dissolved oxygen? But I mean, there's going to be a hack for everything. Cause there's already open source things like open source spectrometers from the the open source lab uh, public lab project there's various things out there and it, but once again it's like for the quality once again saying that the products kind of tend to be sparse there's a lot of DIY crappy stuff but product level stuff is sparse and it's definite area for improvement and all this yeah cost wise the is much cheaper correct yeah, okay. you can get a you know clone for like ten bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ideally we would have like a stripped down version of the Mycoto, mm -hmm. which could probably run on a mega, and then you have you get the data. I mean, you, you can actually do a ready ready Wi-Fi card from this, so you can say stream to your computer and get it in your browser, like that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Then a browser or whatever code on your computer will actually be grabbing the data, and you can have the nice display. If you don't want to do the the Raspberry Pi, which is a, actually a small computer, this is more a right. microcontroller, just a much more simple more device. More power efficient, too. Um, yeah. As far as making one of these here, you, we know we can show you uh, if you want to do a DIY Arduino. Uh, it's actually quite doable. Have you guys seen this? Um, but we've done this. You can do a, no, that's on the OSC wiki. Um, it's called the Minimalist Arduino. Um, and taking a, as simple, so actually Mitch Altman, he's a known guy in the open source computer world. Um, so the design is like this. We did this in a, but you take this one chip, you can get this. So what is the minimalist Arduino? It's, if you want to build one yourself, um, you get one of these chips, mm -hmm. you put it on a breadboard and you, you ha only have to add like a few more, you have a power supply and a little diode, there's a, there, there's a uh, one element here is, a, is an oscillator, I think that's, that's that part there, what is that thing? Crystal? Is that a crystal oscillator? What is that thing? Resonator. So basically what you need to do to build a little Arduino, you need this chip here, which you get for a dollar. Now here it's like four bucks. But that's the that's an Uno chip and and basically you need gotta add power to it. You gotta put a resonator on it between two pins so that it actually gets this that whatever megahertz clock speed on it to do the calculations and besides that it's like the legs are inputs and outputs that's it yeah. <laughs> you need to, uh, and then your Arduino is basically all the power supply like you know the pins the output pins it's all that stuff around it but in principle all you need to do is have this thing resonate uh, with power and that already has all that circuitry in there where you can do like turn this pin on and you could mm -hmm. give it give it language turn turn things on and off so you can program it with an Arduino. Look at the minimalist Arduino page. Let's see what the best, um, what is this? BOM, build instructions, build pictures and video. Uh, it's it, This is how it looks on a breadboard. We've got uh, like a couple of capacitors, but that's a working Arduino where um, I think, how do we program it? Oh yeah, 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 you can hack it. So to program it, you need like a another connection to this, but you can take that chip put it into an existing Arduino Uno board and program it through USB from your computer. And then you take it out and put it back in here and, and you've got your program on it. <laughs> so you can do this very minimalist thing, like for a few bucks you can get microcontroller logic happening.
That's yeah. awesome. So, so you get one Arduino and you can replicate it as much as you You get that one chip, and the point is that one chip costs a dollar, you know? So <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, we could run the CB press, just take that chip and uh, put it into an Arduino Uno to program it. And then all you need to do is tap like these few pins, turn the brick press thing on, off, on, off. That's all. Mm -hmm. So if you notice this pin, it's like a spider. It, it has all these legs. It plugs, actually plugs into the Arduino Unos. You can take those chips out. If it burns out, you can actually take it out with tweezers. It's not soldered. It's a snap in socket. So you just snap it in. Uh, and you can also see uh, just another cool thing, like what is the minimalist, minimalist Arduino? Um, there's a, uh, yeah, there's a uh, Arduino, you can find this online, Arduino on a, on itself. Let's see. Arduino on most simple Arduino. Uh, they had this one where they took that chip and they actually mounted, it's on a wiki somewhere. Um, But it's one where you take that chip itself and you mount all the other components on it. So it was just like that chip with everything on it itself. So a tiny thing, can't find it. Uh, so that's that's about microcontrollers. We have that access with dollar chips like that. And you can in principle just take that simple concept or you can take your Arduino Uno or Mega, use this control since we're saying, hey, let's just control everything with this. We got, we can do our 3D printers and torch tables. Let's do the water watering control <laughs> since we already have this. Yeah. So let's just do it. And then you got the LCD screen where you can run G-code with your very simple program that turns pins on and off. And that's that's the basic theory. So the other thing I just want to cover is the uh, how do you do automated, automated seeding then? So uh, probably many of you have heard of FarmBot. Mm -hmm. That's okay. yeah. The website, yeah. A great project, so you can say farm bot cedar head, and how do they do it? Oh, can that they be use a syringe? Yeah, so we have that, we have those uh, things here. So, all it is is very, very small pump. So, this this thing where let's see, let's um, let's get a better one seed injector, it'll be 3D printed. Yeah, well, so all it is is this head, and you put a needle on it, and then you attach a suction hose at the top. So this is a Lauer needle lock. It's a thing that you lock the needle to it. And that needle, it's literally like one of those medical needles with a flat head on it, flat tip on it. And uh, it picks up one seed at a time. It's tiny. It's like, you know, a fraction of a millimeter. So it can pick up one carrot seed at a time when you connect that to a, but which are like tiny a, seeds. Like a vacuum. It's a vacuum. So what you do there, so there it is. There's a system. So there, is a tiny pump, that thing. It's a little vacuum pump. All that's all it is. And you connect it. You got a like a, what is that? A water condenser, but it's just sucking air. And when that air is being sucked through a vacuum pump, that thing picks picks it up. So you turn that thing on. You take a pick up a seed. You turn on, turn off the vacuum pump, and the seed drops. So that's what you do. So how do you do this with our system? Do the universal axis. Uh, once again, using this controller, and you can turn on your fan. In fact, we have a fan already, <laughs> outlet, which you can repurpose for, this is your vacuum pump now. So you can, and how much does one of these uh, vacuum pumps cost? I was pleasantly surprised. So small 12, 12 volt vacuum pump, and we've got that in the shop on Amazon. Gee, it's only like 22 bucks. So, oh, that's all it is. It's just a just a motor with this little uh, rotor at the bottom, and you got two outlets: one to let air in, and inlet and outlet, and that's it.
And I bet the vacuum so, part of it could be 3D printed too. And then just use yep. a regular 12 DC motor. Yep. And the, one of those little motors, it's like, you know, a couple of dollars. Yes, so, exactly. so this is, uh, if, if 3D printed, you've got a few bucks in this and you can do automated seating. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, can do this readily. And that's, this is exactly what FarmBot uses. You look at their store, they basically have a link to, well, it's there, they have it in stock, but it's the same thing as this. It's all coming from the same Chinese factory. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, um, that's that. I mean, we have the pump here, so we can put 12 volts, volts to it. We can connect a needle to it and see if we're picking up one carrot seed. That's, that's the first experiment. <laughs> And turn it on and turn it off. See if you drop that seed. And it, is it reliable that that you always do it? Yeah, I think it's quite reliable. It's it's just a vacuum, and you can only pick pick up like one thing at a time. But yeah, you know, like on a vacuum cleaner, it'll suck up dust. It'll make something stick to it. If you put this on a vacuum, it'll make it stick. If you turn it off, it'll fall down. It's as simple as that. So, so they have a different uh, mechanism to move things around in 2D space. Is yeah. Are you thinking of a universal axis based? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how long can that universal axis be? Six a feet in our long. current system. Okay. Or in the longer versions, a mile long. <laughs> <laughs> a mile. It's not really a limit okay. to it. Yeah. What I like about the the way that the 3D printer is set up too is because it's like on an arm and extending. Because a farm bot is like a, kind of like on an axis and you can't really do it on shelves or anything like mm -hmm. that. But this one can extend into a shelf. So if you have a bunch of shelves, oh you yeah. can have it move and then, you know, see the entire oh, tree and then slide I'll in and then go to the next one and then keep uh, seating the whole yeah. rest of them. Yeah, so you have a vertical, uh -huh. you have attachment points on the frame mm -hmm. of the greenhouse and yeah, you can go across <laughs> your whole tree. <laughs> see the whole tree, cool. yeah, tower tree. Yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, you get this kind of flexibility once you know how to do this. And the very basic building blocks that are used to build it so thanks to to FarmBot I mean we can do this because otherwise I mean they, they document they, they say exactly what happens there they show okay it's lower needles just same same medical needles uh, you, I mean we got a BOM so what's a lower needle I mean it's, you get that at Amazon a few bucks needle set um, and that's all it is it's you know you get one of these um, 30 gauge, you know, like that's it's measured in gauge, but yeah, 18 gauge, you know, that's all it is, and you screw it on, and these things pick it up. There's ones that are the sharp ones, and then there's blunt ones. You just get the ones that are blunt, meaning just a flat top, uh, so you can pick up a seed more easily that way. But yeah, that's all it is, just needles, you know, a dollar for that. So then 3D printed, say the injector. Uh, body thing that you connect a tube to it and a little filter little filters you can 3d print so uh, very cool so here I mentioned yeah we were set up for so that's the garden hose that's actually the standard garden hose is same thing that's used on washer solenoids like we have the water outlet here um, same fittings but we couldn't find these so we gotta uh, we're kind of doing the S mixture of NPT plus the the packs fittings and things like that and couplers and things like that so we can continue that and, and do it yeah any questions let's let's build yeah, some the of this so yeah in Arduino ID, right? yeah so how do you do the, how do you in inject the G code so you go to here on, on OSC Linux you have Arduino IDE right mm -hmm. so you open that up and you just start a new sketch. Uh, then you take this, so right here, plug this into your computer and upload to this. So whatever I've got here, so you typically start and it'll power if that LCD is working. But I don't have power to this, but this gives me power. Can you put it no, no, I don't need power. Just for the Arduino part to upload. Yeah, this yeah, controls yeah. the power yeah. things like the motors and everything else. This controls the logic. Yeah, the so the logic the power to actually run the board uh -huh. yeah, is yeah. just, the need to write. it only needs oh. very little power. Fraction of a watt.
There you go. Okay, so actually it does it does work. And right now, what's it say on it? Yeah, so right now it's got OSC D3D Pro 3 ready. <laughs> well, we're not going to run that. We're going to go... So in a sketch, you've got... Oh yeah, so you got to do... So in order to find out how you do that, like you say you're a complete beginner, how do you program Arduino? So you Google that. You have to do a... Like what they have there, void setup and void loop. Uh -huh. You have to have that. Those that basically says that. I have, uh, I have some knowledge about it. I yeah, don't. yeah. So if somebody doesn't, how do you write the most simple, simplest Arduino program? I can also just copy paste the yeah. uh, yeah. into it, <laughs> like all oh, software. So like, yeah, like built-in <laughs> examples. So you've got, LED? yeah, you, you have an, like an, okay, so let's take a look at an LED blank program. So here you have file examples, uh, yeah. blank, where's blank? Maybe basics? Yeah, basics, blank. So that's what it is. Um, let's see what's but it all got I, in there. I think you should check out if the board and the processor. And the right. right. So we've got the thing is the most important thing is communication. Once again, the pipes and plumbing. So here in tools, you look at port. First, you got to select that you're going through the USB. Mm -hmm. And then under tools again, you got to go. It already selected at mega 2560. Yeah, that's it that's the arduino mega chip so yes that is set correct what else do we need there board yes it's the arduino mega you can select between a whole bunch of different boards those are the three things you need to do okay. under tools and sometimes we need to run arduino as root because otherwise it doesn't exist to dev the tty or whatever although it looks like on this distro it does but on uh yeah on our osc linux it works out of the box so you go, so the blink basically is, you got that, that's all comments there, so get rid of that. Um, that's another comment. So here you have, once again, you have that void thing. So you have to sel make that pin that you're blinking, you have to declare that it's an output. Mm -hmm. So that's what you gotta do there. Except that's not what we're doing here. We're just doing G-code through Marlin. So Marlin's already on here. <laughs> yeah, you could do this. You can declare a pin, call that pin. That's an output pin. I'm going to trigger it there. And the way you trigger it is digital write pin number 13, high. Then delay, it wastes, waits, waits for a second. It counts in milliseconds. Then digital write 13, low, turn it off. That's it. So that's turning things on and off. That's all you do in electronics. Even the microprocessors, they turn, you know, little gates have logic, it's all on and off signals. Okay, so that's not what we do here. So we don't, don't actually have to do this. This is when we upload, when we go file open OSC Marlin, you can download OSC Marlin, which is running this, this is D3D Pro. You can download that. And here we would go, uh, so after you've got your file, you'd go, well, we just got this blink sketch here, but what you do here is you say, you hit this button, to verify it, so it runs it, compiles it. So even that little bit. Um, yeah, but so it compiled that. Here you would upload. I'm not gonna do that because I want to use Marlin. So you just hit this button here, and it will upload to your board because we're already connected with this USB. It, it would upload right now. So I'm not gonna do it. I want to keep Marlin. Mm -hmm. So in Marlin. What I do instead, I need an SD card. And how do you do that? You go to a text editor. Um, and what you want to look at is in Cura, you have like start and end G codes, but that's not even, uh, I guess the only hack we have to do. So in, when we start up the 3D printer, we do a bunch of certain things, like turn on, turn on certain things, like start and end G code. Uh, that's what it would execute. So when we're actually running, um, let's see, what are we doing here? We are, this is what Cura actually passes into 
the chip when you no when you actually run the code it executes this is actually running within Cura. Okay, how to explain it? In Cura is the app that slices the three D models yeah. and then sets instructions for a three D printer, and we're hacking that solution by instructing it to water cut. Yeah. So what we could do, what you want to look at is what the final G code file looks like. So, you know, you can download. So let's look at so you understand this. Like, say we got the test. There's a test cube we always print first, and we'll build the printer. So it's called cube. All right. So we actually got the G code right here. This cube that we print all the time. So what does it really look like? So you open it up. And what is it? What's it do? So it's a bunch of stuff. This is actually what's passed in start and then G code. Okay, cool. So what you do is like, okay, so let's save, let's save this as an, um, say this is your file here. Uh, let's just open up a text editor, edit. So, okay, so you do this. Well, this is what the, what the G code that's read by when you insert the SD card, that's what gets executed. These are just the step-by-step -step instructions that the controller executes, regardless of what Cura did. So don't worry, actually, don't worry about Cura. But we can shut down Cura, because that's when we have 3D printer files. Don't worry about Cura. What we do worry about is, OK, how do you do this? So we start from scratch. All right, it's going to be a three-line program. Forget the void stuff, setup. That's if you're programming from scratch. This, we're already running a piece of software on the controller and giving it data through the SD card. So the SD card is going to say M104. What is that? Turn on the the fan. M107. Or 106 was it? Uh, yeah, six, six was to turn it on. And 106. Speed sure. M106 S255. Or I think that was the max speed. Mm -hmm. Or I think it was yeah S2. So that turns on the fan. So if you connect to the the fan outlet, you're going to turn on your solenoid. Okay, there. That's it. Now, next is you want to wait. You want to wait a few seconds. So, so do that was the G4 command. Mm -hmm. So, second line is going to be G4 P6000. That's going to be six seconds because it's uh, this counts in milliseconds. So, before it was 60,000 was one minute. So, if it's 6,000, it's six seconds. It's a tenth of a minute. So, this is a milliseconds in milliseconds. How do you do comments there? What is that? This? Yeah. Or a hashtag or something? Probably. Whatever that is. That's milliseconds. So that you're waiting six seconds and then. M107. M107. That's it. Okay. So that's turn, turn, testing your first solenoid automation through the D9 connector right there. That's it. That's your three line program. So you turn it on, turn it off. And then you can just. You can just keep cycling this. You can turn it on and off. You can't really do loops in here. This no, does it line by line. You need another <coughs> no, number mm -hmm. We need another wait. Otherwise, this is going to be all off quickly. Oh, oh yeah. So the, okay, there we go. So you do another wait. Uh, so wait six seconds and then turn it on again. And that's that's that. You can test this this six line thing. See if it works, yeah. or do it one second. So do like one. Like if you want to run for one three days straight. Three days straight. Uh -huh. Then you just have to. It's there's no way in G code you just gotta just repeat it, just loop it, just so paste it in there. Like G code is pretty dumb. That's just simple machine instruction by instruction. So uh, it would be a long problem. You just you know you just. Uh, Can you tell the Marlin code to print that file? You know six thousand times because all it has to do is. You know, say to print that and it'll run yeah. the code. So if you could tell it um, to keep printing it. I'm not sure. Uh, you know. I think if you're running, every time you hit run, so you go, so here you go, it says no SD card, but it would typically have, if you have an SD card, it would be start print, and then you just print that one file. So unless you reprogram Marlin, you just print one file. But that file could be infinite, infinitely long, it would be yeah. gigabytes. So. So you can just do that, and yeah, I mean, that's a simple hacked way to do it right away, 
and we can do this right now using this controller. And this uh, loops itself? No, no it'll just that. do it twice. So if you want to keep looping this, you just copy and paste again and again, and just do this, and <laughs> just do that. That's your loop. There you go. Then you select all those and copy paste again. Yeah, yeah. So you can get to a large pile very quickly, <laughs> but it could be yeah days, days and days of it with a few little copy and pastes. Um, so yeah, that's your start file, and then you can just save that. So what do we save that? Save that as a test watering dot g code. It has to have the g code ending. Um, save it on the desktop there. So we're ready to upload no not upload this put this to an sd card so we need this sd card reader if you don't have a built and built now that we set it on m106 it already assumes the pin or is the pin the g4 um no see the marlin this rides on top of marlin so this is just data that marlin parses yeah. and it does all its complicated thing in there so the 106 okay. and 107 are specifically for fan pins that are already okay so those are already predefined within marlin the whole marlin website tells you what all the pin mappings are and all that and functions so this is just a very simple way and mm -hmm. if you think about it like what's the potential of this you can do a lot of different what you can do with this even with a simple controller like this you can control an infinite number of motors but five at the same time five or ten or let me you can multiplex any of these infinitely but if you don't multiplex multiplex means you just multiply the same function what if you want to not multiplex but scale meaning you have like a, a complex screw machine that's got 13 functions where each is driven by a separate motor what you would do because you only have five channels each channel has a four, four prong wire. So how do you do more than five? Which of course you can multiply by, by just paralleling, multiplexing out of each one. But if you want actual 13 different ones, what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to connect external stepper drivers to this and the pins that are connect. So there's a way like I, there's a way to connect, you, each of these five stepper drivers, you can take those out and put in the big other s external stepper drivers. You can do that. So if you want these five to control, say, 13 different ones, you're missing eight, what do you do? You would let this board do a switch, like a relay or some other switch, which says, okay, you, so first, let's say you do your, you connect your 13, you, you can connect five directly, but the other ones, you'd have to have a switch on those four wires that says, okay, now turn on this other one. So it would be like a four-way switch. So now instead of, and that could be controlled with the Arduino. The Arduino would say, okay, now run this other motor, but then still this, all these five channels would be sending that signal, but to a different motor because you switched it. Like a, sw like a selector switch, like um, a selector switch that switches between one, fun one thing and, and another thing being powered. So you need that but a quadruple selector switch, a switch that has four wires on it. It's okay. called a four-pole switch. Well, and would you be yeah. able to individually turn off these, these motors, or do you only have room for five sets of these four? Well, if sections? you, yeah, that means that the at the other time, if you turn off the power to the other ones, they would just not have power. They would not be doing anything. That's the thing. So you can only do five things at a time, yeah. but you can do the like... Amount of things within those five, yeah. Yeah, but you can connect very like many other functions than what you can do with five axes. So you can, in principle, run any axis machine with it, like six axis, seven axis, eight axis, or whatever, like robotic arms and stuff like that. How you many can do axes? that. How, what, what's an example of a seven axis? A six machine? axis is a robotic arm. A six axis would be something that has three dimensions of motion and maybe like rotations. Yes. Put, put wheels on it, and you've got seven Three rotations, that's six <laughs> axes. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's true. It's a translation, that's another translation axis. Of freedom, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And you can get however much you want for whatever function, for complex. If you get the eight axes, that that's when the robots take over and need. Like a backhoe would be like a complicated backhoe, like a joint arm, it's got so many degrees of freedom, uh, that would be like maybe like 10, 10 degree of freedom arm. Because yeah, the human arms are very mm -hmm. complex, 10, 20, 30, whatever. 
How do you remotely control the stuff, if at all? So if you remotely control it, you would plug in a, a wireless con wireless dongle on it, and you you oh, can okay. upload stuff to it. And you so you don't just to replace the USB. Do we have just an install USB. Hmm? Do we have an instructional for this? For which? For like the what I just said about multiplexing. No, no, no like the program in the AC. Um. There's something else on the, on the YouTube channel. Google it, not a specific one. It's it's a basic thing that falls out of, once you start running Marlin G-code files, mm -hmm. you'll see it. I mean, we'll get we'll start it at the 3D printer workshop, but basically it's like the file just gives, it's a simple program that gives really dumb instructions line by line, and you can put whatever you want in that program. It's a text file. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Uh, so you have to just understand that you have to study the Marlin website to see what things do, but you can basically turn on any pin or turn on a stepper motor, turn, read sensors, and do things. So you've got inputs like there's up to three temperature sensors, there's like six end stop positions or five, six end stop positions that trigger end stops. You've got heater connectors controlling heater. So it's got a couple of transistors on it that powers not too much. I mean, these transistors can only handle like a couple of amps or whatever. But with external relays, you handle any amount of wattage. With um, external stepper drivers, you handle any size stepper motor. So any kind of, you connect external things to it, you can switch them. Uh, it looks like the newer versions of G-Code have loops. And oh yeah? And conditionals. Uh, does does Marlin read loop uh, read? Uh, What's the relation between Marlin and G codes? G code, G -code is standard, right? And what, what G code is used by Marlin? Marlin parses G code okay. files to. So the program that we load here would be Marlin. Yes. Okay. So you need to ask what version of G code does it process? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's or you can just that would be cool because yeah, I thought about it. It's like yeah, you have no programming ability within G code. It would be nice to start putting logic in there because then you can run this and actually make uh, but smart Marlin systems. But Marlin just for three D printers, right? Like I know that it can be yeah, it can be applied to other things, but Marlin is primarily. But people use it for laser cutters and routers and things like that too. Do we use it for, for the CNC board? Oh yeah, we use. That's all we do. Universal controller. Robotic arms too. CB press. Would it make sense to modify Marlin or run this? We're not modifying Marlin. We're just doing. Like fork it. We're doing. We could. Yeah. I mean, this is where we can fork Marlin and get it. Okay. Now this is the CNC torch table display mm -hmm. and all the functions that go with it. Yeah, that would be very useful to have. Mm -hmm. So that's West territory mm -hmm. and stuff like that um, for programmers. Yeah, all that stuff would be very useful. So you don't, because on this, we're going to just, it looks like a 3D printer, but we're actually controlling our components with it. Yeah. I mean, we can modify that screen. It's just some programming. Not a big deal. You can learn that. What's it's the cost of this universal control board? Um, I don't know, like 50, 100. Okay. So what's the parts like? The whole controller kit you can get for like 45 bucks. The power supply is like 10 bucks, you know, yeah. 55, 60, 70. I mean, if you get into individual parts, Will cost you. I mean the this safety GFCI that's like fifteen bucks too. A couple of plugs. Yeah. <laughs> Under a hundred bucks okay. for just the parts. You can unstick it and just put it in something else. Yeah. Yeah, that's what people in different countries would do if you don't have this kind of a GFCI, put whatever plug you have into it. So that's the basics of uh, auto control. But yeah, it's just sensor sensing things and Turning things on and off. And the power and supply so takes 110 volts. Yeah, this is uh, turns this is supply. DC. Yeah, turns into DC. It comes out, comes in 120. You can do 240. This is uh, uh -huh. 120 to 240. So you can feed it with whatever you got. Out comes 24. And then the this one though, that's just the wall ward for five volts for your USB. That's that's how we power the Arduino. Yeah. So Arduino is not getting powered by this, by the the power supply here. Yeah. It's just coming from that. But that's a way cheaper, like those USB. Because we're doing this, we don't need those big power supplies because the big thing on a con on a printer controller is the heat bed. That's why they got those fat power supplies on your 3D printers. Here we get away with this tiny one because we're using AC. 
and we have safety like people wouldn't do AC because it's dangerous well we've got safety on it so we got the GFCI and things like that so we like the AC because you can handle any amount of power otherwise to do like the thousand watt heat bed no you can only do like a couple of few hundred watts out of this naturally mm -hmm. but with this it's unlimited yeah. so so you just use the logic and then put the power elements external to it and that's a, a that's that's a really it's uh or the solenoid what do you call it solid state relay solid state relay yeah. that's a house appliance grade thing right or like yeah a, oh yeah. yeah this is an industrial appliance grade thing yeah industrial grade solid state relays you use a lot of fluorescent uh, lights yeah. and you can stack so you talk about big power switching you know you have 10 or 20 of these in parallel and run your 50 kilowatt solar panel mm. system turning things on and off mm -hmm. like this kind of stuff can get you for example like a transfer switch for a huge panel array so just what do we say this is let's say we're running 240 on this say it's 40 amps 10 kilowatts out of one so you're using the little Max. USB adapter as the inverter then AC to DC inverter. Just for the yeah, Arduino. that's yeah, that's AC to five volt DC wall work. Gotcha. Yeah. Just just one of these. Yeah. One dollar. It's a it's a technically a charger or a yeah specific. any charger you can connect this up to any five volt source. So you're going from USB A to USB B for the Arduino. The USB B has that's the square plug thing. That that's what you got on the Arduino. You got the yeah. square plug, but other than that, everything is like all common off the shelf parts, um, things like that. Yep. So that's what we do. We can, you know, Christian, we, we could try to take this downstairs and actually turn on that water solenoid off, on and off with this. Mm -hmm. We can try it. We need to hook up the, you have this valve thingy that we yeah, fit yeah. into the pump. So we do, we're gonna fit that. We're making this board with the eight relays, uh, which will have wires from these going into the relays. And those valves on that big, Thing is, are those motorized or? No, no, no. Okay. You're talking about the uh, uh, junction hookup that you had. Uh, no, 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 that's, no. That. okay. that's just a multiplexing manifold, just manifold to divide one flow into many. They use that in hydronic heating. So all we need to do is to kill the, the, the power switch to the pump, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's what you do. For us, the pump is running and you switch whatever water outlet you want from multiple we got eight channels right now so yeah more yep. proof of concept is one necessarily needed here but that would let us use either a smaller pump or right. water a lot more uh, areas because that's the whole idea is to make it an efficient system so you don't just okay. use optimal energy yeah because just switch out things they don't need to run the whole time the pumps anyway no. they just need to trickle every once in a while so if you just yep. go and Instead of just powering everything all together, you just yep. you know, run those four, then loop those four, then those four, then those four, and then loop it. You still get it, all the water you all, all the water you'll need, but you know you make better use of your pump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so like for example, what are the costs on those water switches? Uh, the the DC ones they may be just a little. Let's see, Adafruit has them, right? Adafruit Industries. 12 volt DC solenoid, water solenoid, one of those, seven dollars. That's that's pretty cheap, and you can get one with two channels, which is the washer solenoid for the same price. So now the washer double. solenoid is that just when you put water to it, it opens, and when you uh, shut off power, it closes. How does that work? No, it has yeah, a power a, feed, so you can switch a, it on. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing as this. You've got a power feed going to it. So when you put energy to it, it's normally closed. When you trigger it, it opens. Okay. And the washer one has two sets of connectors because you want to turn on one channel or the other. One is hot and the other is cold. So washer machine solenoid. It's these things. So you see these things, I could get them for like five, you know, half the price. So two dollars fifty a channel. You got watering, and they've got two of those solenoids in the back. You, you got to connect each one for whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. These are one twenty AC, so that's the only difference. The other ones are DC. This is actually easier to power because for twelve DC you got to have a twelve volt power supply. 
uh, 120 you have right out of the wall. Yeah. So it's a much simpler, actually a simpler thing to do. They have a convenient uh, bolting plate too, so you can just screw that onto whatever you, your it's backing good. is. The other one kind of, oh, we were looking at like cutting out little squares to put them, fit them in and put a screw in it. But yeah, this is easy to work with. Uh, just keep the water away from the electrical connections. That's all you got to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. So you want a clean, leak-free system. Otherwise, you you got a lot be, of problems. Be a shocking <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's that. Uh, any questions? Let's maybe try to finish some of that. Uh, just because Pete mentioned, what what was the application of the robotic arm for the uh, CV uh, press? No, not nothing to do with it. The the CB press can be powered by this controller. Is, was the point? Uh, so we can, instead of, well, actually Marlin because it can turn things on and off. You can program the G code. So actually, instead of programming the native, native uh, uh, Arduino programming, which is like C, you can do it through G code, and give it all all that it it needs but there are things you have to s in a brick press we do have a sensor so how do you do a sensor you can't you can't do that actually um, you would need custom firmware that would be the CB press firmware so you can run a controller like this but you would have to program Arduino at, at its more fundamental it couldn't be just g-code because g-code is doesn't have feedback, it just does things. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, I'm confusing things. This can be used to control the, the brick press. This can be used to control a robot arm. Okay. That, that was my point. Yeah. It'd just be a really dumb robot, robotic arm. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have feedback. Uh, well, it would if you uh, program it a yeah. proper firmware, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah, it it's would not have about hard to change the, the firmware, though. No. I think, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's not, not, it's not a big deal. It's I think the difference is, is that the atmospherics to actually control like water stuff like that. I don't know if there are firmware already, but there are probably firmware for robot arms for Arduino. So you can just them, but I don't think you can. Oh yeah, like uh, um, easily find one for like a Thomas and Freecat and has a robot arm designer in it actually. Uh, it's got all that kinematics the in thing there. You show me, show that is that solely for Raspberry Pi or is it compatible with Arduino? It's not compatible for Arduino. It's not. It's just for Raspberry Pi. Yeah, but someone could write w one thing like that for Arduino pretty easily. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. There you go. Weston write one for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we well you, you can have another Arduino device? on the side mm -hmm. that's sensing. And if you make it does a something, shuts off this uh, one. Dashboard system. Take a ra Start Raspberry Pi dashboard that. system and port to uh, yeah. Arduino. You want an Arduino dashboard? It's something called Mycoto that he Mycoto. used. Mycoto. Oh, yeah. 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 Press yeah. reset. Then the whole code goes again. Yeah, just uh, well, if you reset this, then you have to go and press play again. Uh -huh, but that's yeah. It. yeah, that's it. But it's convenient that you have you actually put you have a little knob to turn things on and off. You don't have to. I mean, that's super convenient. Otherwise, you have to like, get a button, wire it up, mount it. It's all there already. So yeah. So that's it's very convenient. We've got it. Let's just use it. Yeah. What? You can't sleep that. That's that. about all. <laughs> twelve committed hours. <laughs> you said twelve hours. So yeah. So let's get out there. All right. And uh, turn on some solenoids. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful. Right. We could do that on there. So well, we have the cold already. Yeah, it's two lines. It's two lines. lines. I already. Uh, it's, it's the six lines I showed you before. Did you miss that? Oh uh, no, I yeah. did. No, no, I need the SD card reader because I just put it in through the Arduino. I'm gonna use Marlin. And I'm just gonna run G code and uh, make it on a 3D printer. Yeah, I feel the, 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 the,